Hi everybody, this is your notes and examples video on transformations. Well, not all transformations, just rigid motions. So that's translations, reflections, and rotations. Okay. As always, I have the notes that I would normally show you in class up on the left side of the screen and your notes on the right side of the screen. I am annotating with Cami just to make my life a little bit easier. Um, but you can always edit your Google Doc directly, okay? So the way I'm going to kind of go through and talk about this is I'm going to tell you and give you an overview of these different types of transformations, right, and tell you a little bit about them. Everything that you see on the slides is also already pre-written for you in the table in your notes, right? So I'm gonna kind of talk you through all of these things, and then I'm gonna do examples with coordinate points and with vector notation for each type of uh, translation, reflection, and rotation, okay? so. The very first one that we're going to talk about is translations, which is just a shift. Okay, so essentially what you're doing is you're taking an entire shape. You're taking an entire shape, say that looks like this, and you're taking it and you're taking every single point in that shape and you are moving it somewhere else. Right? And you're moving it the same distance and in the same direction, okay, um, right, so you're just taking a shape and moving it around the screen, right, or around your page, right, so say this point up at the top, right, in the top left corner here is point A, then this new point right here, okay, at the other end of my pink uh, directed line segment, right, my arrow kind of showing me which direction I'm going and how far I'm moving, okay, that point right there is called A prime, it has a little dash next to it, okay, just to indicate that it's like the new point A, right, it's the point A after you move the shape, okay, so the very fanciful geometry definition is that a translation is a rigid motion where every point is moved the same distance and the same direction, okay? When I say every point, what I mean is that you are taking the entire shape and moving it. You're not just moving, say, the perimeter, like the, the border, or you're not just moving one point that's inside the shape, right? You're moving the entire shape around. Okay, right, so it's just a shift, right? You're just shifting the shape up, down, left, right, diagonally, what have you, okay? What you will go through and what you'll see as I kind of go and talk about all of these things is that every transformation can be expressed with a function as well as with a something that we call vector notation. Okay, so the function is very similar to the um, the function tables that you did in algebra, where you would have like your input, and then something would happen to it, and you have your like that those coordinate points, and then you would have your output on the right hand side. Very very similar. Okay, this x comma y just means any coordinate point in the shape. Okay, that's like your starting point, right? Okay, and then the arrow means becomes, right? So this is like my, so this is my input that I have marked in green right here. And then my output is this guy, okay? So these variables here, A and B, just represent how far you're moving for X and how far you're moving for Y and in what direction, right? So if it's, say, if it was like plus two right here, if, if this was X plus two, right, I would move my shape two spaces to the right, okay? If this was Y minus five right here, I would move my shape five units down, okay? So this the variable A is just your movement left or right, and then B is your movement up or down, okay? 
So you're when you have a coordinate point, right, you can actually take the coordinate point and plug the coordinate point x and y into this output part of the function to figure out where that coordinate point will end up after you do the translation, okay? I talked about this already, that the new points are indicated with this little prime symbol right here. So P becomes P prime, A becomes A prime, right? It just helps us to distinguish from the original shape and the new shape because they're going to look identical, right? So the, the new shapes will have the little primes next to them, okay? If you move this shape again, so let's say I took this and I moved this again and I was just moving it to the right a couple of units, Right, then you would have two primes on there. Okay, it just helps us to tell the shapes apart, basically. Okay, this uh, so we, this is function notation here, which is the most common type of notation. But you'll also sometimes see this, which is vector notation. Okay, which it's it's basically it's the exact same thing as function notation. Like everything is done the same way. It's just written in like shorthand, basically. So T means translation. Okay, and then this subscript right here, notice how it says A and B, same as the A and B that you see up here in the function notation. So it's just going to tell you how far to move left or right, A is, and then how far to move up or down, right? That's what the, the B value is going to tell you there. Okay, All right. So I'm going to clear my screen here, and we're going to talk about reflections next. Okay, so reflections are exactly what they sound like, right? When you look in the mirror, right, you are looking at your reflection. It's like a flipped version of you, okay? So the fanciful geometry definition is that it's a rigid motion where every point, meaning the whole shape, okay, is flipped over a particular line, okay? So that line could be anywhere, right? It could be a horizontal line like this one with the fish that you see right here. It could be a vertical line. So let's say I have a triangle that looks like this and I wanna flip it over this vertical line right here. So I'm gonna take it and flip it and now it looks like this, right? It could be a slanted line. Right, so maybe I have a, um, ooh, I don't know, maybe I have a rectangle, for example, and I want to flip it over this slanted line. So this is going to end up down here. All right, so it's kind of taken and flipped over that, uh, that, uh, that slanted line there. Okay, so it can be any line at all. Okay, the way you're going to hear me talk about this a lot is that this line is your mirror. Okay, so what that means is that all of the points have to be the same distance away from the mirror in the original shape, the pre image, and the new shape, which is the image. Okay, so like if we look at our fish, for example, right here, okay, and we look at these two points, right, D and D prime, notice that you can draw a line directly from point D down to the mirror, and it's two units, okay? And if you do the same thing with D prime, Right, you can still draw a line directly from D prime to the mirror, and that line is also two units. Right, so the mirror is going to be right in the center, like right in the middle of your two ref your two shapes. Right, the image and the pre-image. Right, in order to know that you've placed your mirror in the right spot. All of the points have to be the same distance away from the mirror, okay? Um, so when we're talking about functions, right, when we looked at the last one with translations, the functions, there was like a general formula that you could follow, okay? 
Um, but it's different with reflections, okay? The function will change depending on the line that you're reflecting over, okay? So there's different functions for different lines of reflection, okay? And there's four pretty common ones um, that I'll do examples for uh, in the next part of this video, okay? Um, but it's the the functions are written the same right you always start with your input which is x comma y an arrow and then your output would be right here okay and so this output will change depending on the line of reflection that you're looking at okay the vector notation for reflections is a lowercase r okay very important that it's a lowercase r because an uppercase R means something different. And then the subscript this time is going to tell you which line you're reflecting over. So in this picture right here, the line that I'm reflecting over that I drew here in purple, right? that line is the x-axis. Right? So I took my shape and I reflected it over the x-axis. Okay. All right, so I'm going to clear my screen. And we've got one more rigid motion to talk about, which is rotations. Okay, a rotation is exactly what it sounds like, okay, where you are taking a, so say I have my coordinate grid right here, and I have this triangle, right, and I want to rotate it, um, I want to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise this way, right, so that means this point here at the top. I'm going to call it point A, is now going to be facing this way, right? So you're literally taking your shape. So there's my new point A, right? You're literally taking a shape and you are rotating it around a point, okay? The point that I rotated around in my example right there was the origin. It's this point right here. So you can almost think of it as like the, the point that you're rotating around is like the center of a circle, Right, so like I can draw a line, a radius out to um, point A right here. And then if I'm rotating it 90 degrees, all right, I can draw another line kind of out like this, the same distance. It's like the radius of a circle, right? So you could continue to draw like the rest of the circle. So that point A is going to kind of follow along that circle, depending on how many degrees you rotate it, okay? okay? So the fanciful geometry definition is that a rotation is a rigid motion where every point in a figure is rotated around a point. For us, most of the time, that point is going to be the origin, right? Um, every once in a while, you'll see a, a shape rotated not around the origin, but around um, some other point, okay? There's not really functions um, for those when it's when the shapes are not rotated around the origin um, because those functions are so variable, they change so much. So um, that's why most of the time when you see things rotated, it'll be around the origin because we actually have functions that we can use to help us figure out where like new coordinate points are going to be. Okay, so like I said, the function will change depending on the point that you use as the center, okay, and how many degrees that you're rotating the figure, right? So in my example up here at the top, I rotated this triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise, right? Um, but if I decided to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, right, so going this way instead, uh, I would have ended up with a completely different coordinate point and I would have used a completely different function, okay? So there's three really rotation functions that you wanna know about, which is 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and 180 degrees, okay? So for 90 degrees clockwise, you take your X and your Y, right, your input, you switch them, and you make your new Y coordinate or your original X coordinate change the sign. For 90 degrees counterclockwise, you switch your X and your Y, right, from your input, and then you change the sign of your new X value or your old Y value, okay? And then for 180 degrees, you just change the sign of both your X and your Y. 
okay? The vector notation for a rotation is a capital R, right? So remember I told you a couple minutes ago that you have to make sure that you use a lowercase r for reflections because the uppercase r means something different. This is the uppercase r, right? It means something different, okay? Um, so uppercase r means rotation. This one will have two things uh, in the subscript, okay? The first, uh, the first thing that you see there is a capital O. That stands for origin, okay? It just means um, that's the point that I'm rotating around, okay? If it was a different point, um, it would be like a different letter right there, or there might be a coordinate point there, okay? And then what comes next is how many degrees that you are rotating, okay? Um, so here, this is positive 90 degrees, which means I'm going to go counterclockwise 90 degrees. So positive is counterclockwise, which is kind of something that we don't, like, it's not something that we would expect, right? We're so used to the way that clocks work that we would think clockwise would be positive, but uh, that's not the case. Um, if you remember, uh, probably from your pre-algebra classes or maybe your algebra classes, when we would name the quadrants of a coordinate grid, right, where this is y and this is x, right, the upper right is quadrant one, and then it goes quadrant two, three, and four, right? So counterclockwise, we say is positive because it follows the order, right? Going counterclockwise follows the order of the quadrants, okay? So counterclockwise is positive, okay? And then if you see a negative angle, that means you're going clockwise. So if this said R, uh, capital R, the origin, and then negative 90, right? That means that I'm going 90 degrees clockwise, okay? All right, so that's all of the info for just the, the general, like, intro to translations and reflections and rotations, okay? Um, one other thing I want to tell you about rotations is the closer the object is, the shape is to the center of rotation, the smaller the circle will be, so the less it will move, like it won't move quite as far, which kind of makes sense, right, when you think about the size of circles. Okay, so that's everything for translations, reflections, and rotations. I'm actually going to stop this video here and do a different video for you where I'm going to go through examples for functions um, with the... Uh, with these three types of rigid motions, as well as some example problems with vector notations. And then I have some other practice problems for you that I'm going to do one video for each type of transformation. So I'll do some practice problems for you with translations, some practice problems with reflections, and some practice problems with rotations. All right, so I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.